Good evening everybody and we're back with another video of Butter Makes Everything Better. How are you guys doing today? In our household tonight we're doing a portion of our Easter dinner for tomorrow. And on tonight I'm going to share with you my way of making homemade cornbread dressing. In the um, images and watching my mom cook in the kitchen, Miss Emma Holmes, shout out to her. Taught your daughter well. Um, so we're just going to show you guys how to make it. And I hope you enjoy. Let's get this video melting. Alright, first we're going to start out with bell pepper, onion. Um, I just use a half of onion because you have to be very, very careful with onion. Because onion will cause your entire meal to spoil. You don't want that to happen. Okay, you're going to dice it up, not too fine, but just enough that when you get ready to saute them, they become translucent. Now, you must realize that the bell peppers will soften after the onion. So, make sure that you have an equal amount of bell pepper to the amount of onion. Okay, and this is just showing you that I used that to cut that up. Okay, in this video, you're going to need chicken broth, cayenne pepper if you like yours a little spicy, poultry seasoning, sage, uh, Tony saturates, garlic powder, black pepper, cream of chicken, parsley, and of course butter. Okay, no oils, just butter. Over here in this pan, we have our cornbread that's already been finely chopped up, um, baked in this cornbread mixture. In this mixture, we also have some shrimp and crab and crawfish in here. That's if you choose to add it. But I also have um, some pork loin in here that I had in the freezer that's been sitting there. So I said, hey, why not use it? And to add that extra richness, I have some smoked turkey tails in here. Um, I know it may sound crazy, but guess what? That's that extra tender love and care. Once you take your cornbread and you cook it, I also like to go ahead and season my cornbread with sage, poultry seasoning, as well as parsley. So some of that is already in the cornbread. Let it cool, break it up really, really good, and you're good to go. All right, guys. So here we are. We're going to turn this on because this is already cut up. And then we're going to add our butter. And it's to each his own of how much butter you would like to add. Y'all know me, butter makes everything better. So if you want, if you're looking for a rich dressing, then you want to add enough in there. This way you don't have to add salt, okay? Like I told you before in my previous videos, I do not cook with salt, okay? Journey, let me get my handle holder over here. Thank you. I do not cook with salt because salt, like I said, is a see-through killer. That's why a lot of us are suffering with swollen ankles, swollen feet, um, swollen hands, you know, because salt is sodium. And all sodium does is just increases your water level and raises your blood pressure extremely high so we want to get that melting while that's doing that we're going to go ahead and begin to add our sage and this is how i do mine guys you may not do it this way i don't even think my mom did it this way i'm just kind of using some of her techniques you want to make sure you don't put too much sage because sage is a green herb and if it's green you don't want your dressing to come out green and remember I said that we're doing cornbread dressing. We're not doing stuffing. There's a difference. Journey, can you pass me that other poultry season over there, please? This poultry season is the Southern Blend. It's the small one. Okay, this one has all herbs and stuff in it. And then we're going to kick it off with a little bit of the original. The one that my grandmother, your grandmother, and mom have always used. And that's the original poultry seasoning okay some people feel like that's taking too long guys some people feel like oh you don't have to put sage in poultry seasoning inside of dressing I don't know who told them that 
it's their prerogative. Some people was taught that you don't have to put it in there. But if I walk in your kitchen on Thanksgiving Day and I cannot smell the essence of dressing, which is the sage and poultry seasoning, then I'm just going to think that you just baked a pan of wet cornbread. So we want to get this sizzling and going here. And remember, guys, if you use pre-cut up vegetables, that's fine. But make sure they're not the frozen kind. The reason why I say that is because they're frozen and they're a different size. When they begin to get hot, they will shrink down. So you want to make sure that you have enough. Okay? And you don't, like I said, you don't have to put a lot of onion. Because you don't want your onions... You don't want your onion to overpower your dressing and cause it to spoil. As that begins to cook down a little bit, guess what we're going to add? Yes, yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy. We're going to add some minced garlic. For a pan of dressing that I'm making, this is about how much garlic I want to put in there. Okay? And you can already smell the essence of dressing. Now, some people are probably taught how to make this totally different than the way I'm making it. And that's fine. I'm just sharing how... I was taught how to make cornbread dressing and how I watched my mom make cornbread dressing all those years that helped me get to the size that I am right now. And the cornbread dressing that my kids love and my husband loved, and, you know. I just know this, if you don't put enough ump in it and enough kick in it and enough TLC in it and no sage and no poultry, you don't have no dressing. I remember growing up, people coming to our house for Thanksgiving and we're going to their house. The first thing you smell is the dressing in the kitchen. You may not smell the turkey. You may not smell anything else, but the sweet potato pies and the dressing, that's the first thing you're going to smell. Okay, guys, we're going to get ready to add... As you can see, they're beginning to get translucent. You see them? See that beautiful liquid that that butter has created? Now, I've seen my mom make this a thousand times. And what I've seen her do with her cream of chicken is that she adds it to her pot mixture instead of just dumping it right into the cornbread. Because believe it or not, cream of chicken is not cooked, guys. It's a condensed soup. It's not cooked. Condensed means that it's stiff, okay? That means that it's compact. You see it? Right there. That's what adds your creaminess to your dressing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add this to our pot mixture. And don't, don't hesitate to add two of these if you're doing a large pan of dressing. Sometimes some people's dressing is dry because they don't add enough cream of chicken. And not cream of mushroom, guys. Cream of chicken. Cream of mushroom is used for broccoli, rice, and cheese casserole, not for dressing. So please don't get them mixed up. Okay? So now what we're going to do, we're going to kind of reduce our heat and just kind of fold this in there together. 
because you want to cook that cream of chicken. You don't want to leave that stuff whole and dump it in there in that dry cornbread because then you're going to have a big lump of a mess that you're trying to get stirred up and wonder why it won't break up because it's not moist enough. It's smelling just like Thanksgiving in here already. Okay, now once we've got it turned up, I mean spit up. We're going to add one more ingredient and then we'll come back. Okay, guys, now we're going to add our chicken stock. Because you got to realize you have a lot of cornbread over there. So with you having a lot of cornbread, you got to make this mixture moist. Because that cornbread is just like a bad hair day. And coarse hair is going to soak up that liquid just as fast as you put it in there. Have you ever seen somebody that has a that has coarse hair and you get ready to perm that hair? You got to use that whole jar of perm. Because coarse hair, I promise you, soaks up all of that per. My mom used to say when I was growing up, as fast as she puts grease in my hair, it drinks it. And this is only if you're using a, uh, making a large pan of dressing. You don't have to do this much. All you're doing is liquefying your creamy chicken. That's all you're doing is liquefying it. I know somebody's probably saying that prop, that looks like a gravy. It does. It looks like a rich gravy. And believe it or not, you can make gravy out of cream of chicken. That'll be another video one day. If somebody wants to learn how to do that. But yeah, you can make gravy out of this. So now, what we want to do is we want to add our black pepper, which is our crushed, finely crushed black pepper. And guys, please don't add any salt to this. Please do not add any salt to this. Because that cream of chicken already has sodium in it. And then if you use the soul food um, southern blend poultry season that I use, then that has salt in it. So please do not. The chicken stock, it has salt in it. So if you can help it, for all our salt lovers out there, please don't add any salt to it because it's going to be entirely too salty. And you're not going to be able to serve it. Especially if you got family members that have hypertension or regular blood pressure problems, you know, heart problems. So you got to really be careful with that sodium intake. And yes, I got fancy tonight, guys. I'm using my grinder. I remember we went to um, dinner and my mom they had a pepper grinder at the table and she didn't know how to use it she was trying to figure out how you put this pepper on the um, the food my husband had to show her how to do it it was funny I guess she had to be in there but just imagine somebody with a pepper grinder doing this here and wondering why it's not coming out <laughs> they don't know that there's a grinder on there I like to use this pepper for uh, my cornbread dressing because it's prevalent. I can see it. But if you want to use the, you know, the finely ground pepper, you can. Okay. Now we're going to add a little bit of our Tony Saturates. 
And that's if you only want it to be a little spicy. You know, I don't want my dressing to be super hot. But a little kick always does the trick. Okay, and we got our parsley flakes. I didn't cut up any fresh parsley today, guys. Because, of course, with the COVID going on, you have to limit your trips to the store. Well, you should, shall I say. Especially if you're not covering yourself up. I hope everybody's doing okay. I pray everybody's strength is great and you're taking the time to enjoy your family. Um, I posted a, a video yesterday, inspiring to inspire, that inspiration is the key. And I hope that everyone is taking the time to enjoy one another. You see this, guys? This is the consistency that you're looking for. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move over. We're going to turn this, the heat down. And we're going to grab... Let's see. Excuse me. Bless you. We're going to get our things. And what I like to do is I like to make a mold in the middle of my dressing. Okay? So when I get ready to pour this, it won't run all over the top. That's right. It kind of looks like um, broccoli cheese soup now. And we're going to pour this in here. And we're going to wait a minute. And we're going to stir this in. Let all that richness get in there. And it's okay if you got some bigger cornbread pieces in there, that's fine. Because when they cook, they're going to disintegrate anyway. So we're going to pour the rest of this. Don't rinse that pot out, guys. Do not rinse your pot out. Because you're going to fill that up with more water. Especially if you have a big serving size like I do. You're going to fill that up with more water. Now, I heard somebody say that they've seen people put boiled eggs in a dressing. I've never heard of that. I've heard of giblet gravy, or giblet as some people say, um, having eggs in it. But I've never, ever, 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 ever heard of people just putting boiled eggs in their cornbread dressing. Look at that. That is beautiful. This is probably going to taste better than Thanksgiving dressing. Because for some unknown reason... When you make dressing unexpectedly or not for its purpose, which is Thanksgiving, Christmas, and stuff like that, it seems to taste a whole lot better. Now, guys, some people will say, oh, that's good enough right there. No, it's not. You put that dressing in the oven like that, it's going to be waxy and dry. Don't you do that to yourself. And please don't do it to your family. All right? You're going to pour some more water on that. Like I told you. Cornbread is like coarse hair. It soaks it up. You want to make sure you got to make sure that that moisture goes all over the cornbread. Don't think that because you added more water that you lost your flavor. You have it. Because remember, your flavor is in that pre-baked cornbread. And it's in that good condensed soup mixture that you made. See, we still got some dry parts over here. So we're going to add a little bit more water. Because we want to make sure that when she cooks, she cooks really good. And this should do it, guys. And guess what? Y'all know me. I'm going to add some more butter. 
Yes, I am. I sure am. My daughter's looking like, really, Mom? <laughs> yep, I sure am. And I know it seems like a lot of water, but it's really not, guys. You see how it's just soaking up that water? I'm telling you, like coarse hair. It soaks up any moisture that you put in there. Look at all that good meat that those turkey tails are going to add in there and that flavor. And I take my turkey tails and I put them in the oven first. Let them cook so it can draw all that nice fat out of it. The more water you add, the easier it should be to stir. If it's still hard to stir, you need to add some more water. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more butter. Let's add some more poultry, se poultry seasoning. Excuse me, guys. We're gonna add some more sage. We're gonna add some bada boom, bada bang, some cayenne pepper. Garlic powder. Hold on guys, I can't find my wooden spoon. <laughs> my daughter's laughing because she's seen it. And she's telling me. That's not funny. <laughs> Alright. Let's add our butter in there. I'm telling y'all, butter makes everything better. I'm telling you. My oldest daughter will say, now that's on period. <laughs> you get that butter going in there. And if your dressing don't have no color to it, you did something wrong. It needs to have some color. It's not supposed to look like white cornbread. If it looked like white cornbread, you've done something wrong. You missed a step somewhere. Like I told y'all before, I like to see my pepper in my dressing. So I love using my trusty dusty pepper grinder. All right, and believe it or not, you guys, my sister talks about me all the time, but guess what? You got to add a pinch of sugar, and when I say a pinch, about a teaspoon. Do not add two and three and four teaspoons of sugar. If that's the case, you need to use Jiffy Cornbread Mix. And I'm not talking about those who like a little bit of sweet cornbread. I'm not talking about that because we eat sweet cornbread in this house. And you have some people that use Jiffy cornbread mix to make dressing. That's fine. But in this house, and I wasn't raised on sweet cornbread dressing. But you put a pinch of sugar in there to cut the bitter taste. That's all. It's not going to make your dressing sweet at all. Now, please rest assured. That this is not cooked, guys. So don't think that you can serve this like this. All right, let's give it a try. That is awesome. That is really awesome. Spread it out. Pop it in the oven. Make sure you put foil on it. If you don't put foil on it, it will dry it out. Put it on a preheated oven of 375 and let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. I know you're saying, oh, the cornbread's already done. Yes, the cornbread's done. The meat's done that you put in. But all the flavors 
need to cook together in order for it to taste like cornbread dressing. Okay, guys? So with that being said, pop it in the oven, 375, 45 minutes to an hour. After that, take your foil off of it, put it on the broil, let it get that dark brown on the top. And once you see the good gooeyness of that butter, richness cooking around the outside of it, the bubbles, it's ready to serve. Okay, guys, until the next time, y'all have a blessed evening. Bye-bye for now.